Take your time, I'm in no hurry, my friend. Good evening, or I should say good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. My name is ASAF Adonai, and uh, ASAF Cafe is a show where every week I invite a guest and I just play the piano and talk while they have Cheez-Its or soda. And in this case, soda. My <laughs> guest is Patty Reed. This is the second uh, part two of ASAF Cafe and the shows we're doing this afternoon. And uh, a recap of the things we were talking about. We talked about uh, being a teenager <laughs> and not yes, doing a crazy the thing. Yes, and being a joywriter, yes. And we talked about uh, Superman uh, with Christopher Reeves. And, of course, my favorite was George Reeves. We talked about that, the old black and white uh, television series. And we talked about the Irish just towards the end. Yes, and uh, sure the, song, the song that I had just played was Coming Through the Rye. I will do that again. Coming Through the Rye. It's an old Irish tune. There you go, coming to the right. There you are. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> and you know, speaking of Celtic music, that's pretty cool music. Yeah, we we when we had the Celtic Fest this year, I was I was kind of disappointed. A lot of people were. We were hoping that it would last at least towards one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's it stumped the bands and everything because by the time um, they decided the mayor and others that it was time to uh, disengage. It was only from 9.30 to 10.30. Us people that don't seem we need a curfew were kind of puzzled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just like Celtic music. I don't really play it on the piano much, but I do like that music. It's just upbeat. It gets you going. It brings you to life. That's yeah. true. I have a friend uh, named Robin, Elaine Dent, who uh, plays in a Celtic band. And she was one of the guests on this new Lawrence Welk show that we were talking about oh, recently. Oh, how great. Yeah, so when you get a chance to look it up, look it up on YouTube, you can see her. Oh, yeah. And again, the name of this new television show that I just recently did is called Music with ASAF, a remake update of the Lawrence Welk show. You can uh, either buy a copy of this here at the MCAT studio or just go on YouTube and put in Music with ASAF a remake update of the Lawrence Welk show and you'll be able to see the entire show. This is the pilot that we just shot. And as I said in the other... You shot a pilot? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, the, <laughs> the TV pilot, not the airplane pilot. Or I shot the sheriff or something, Eric Clapton, you know. But we shot the pilot and um, it's on YouTube now for the world to see. And like I said in the other show, I'm attempting to see if I can get on a national level. And I got an email from the Lawrence Welk Network. Oh, did you? Yes. That's I assume lovely. I assume they're going to be checking out this new Lawrence Welk oh, show. <laughs> <laughs> we have the bubbles on the program. And um, like I said, Robin Lane Dent was one of the uh, performers. Joe Sullivan, he drove all the way up from Billings to be part of this show. Oh, that's awesome. And um, my featured guest was Maya Wynn. Oh, okay. A young teenage girl that has a big following. And uh, she had these some... wings. She had some wings on, so she looked oh, really great. Oh, awesome. Did she do the Halloween thing? Was it? No, no, it wasn't. No, this was shot before the Halloween season, okay, so okay. she just happened to have the wings on. So she looked like uh, like a giant Tinkerbell or cute little fairy. <laughs> I think I think if they hi if they actually filmed the inside of my trailer, I still haven't taken the lights down or anything from Halloween. The Halloween party I had it was pretty awesome. Between the plasma ball and all the lights and the uh, animated skeletons singing and stuff was pretty cool. Well, now it's uh, Thanksgiving and. Uh, um, what do you have to be thankful for? I am thankful that this year now I own a house. Good for you. That's a good thing to be thankful for. Yes, it is. I'm thankful for this television show because it just popped up out of thin air. Yes. Seriously. The idea came to me to do this new Lawrence Welk show uh, July of this year, 2014. And uh, I wrote the script to the show. I designed the set. And uh, the Alps Corporation gave me the ballroom, the governor ballroom. And I had to design all that. You'll see it when you go on YouTube. I designed all that, put it together. And then, of course, Mayor John Ingham was a good sport. He was part of the program. Well, I, I did, you did show me some of it, and it was very, very, very elegant. Yeah, so, um, you know, Lawrence Welk left a great legacy to the world. 
and uh, I'm at a point in my life I want to just continue the tradition. Oh, it's yeah. funny because you know when you talk about Lawrence Welk, and I'm saying this kindly. Nobody grows up and says they want to be Lawrence Welk. No. They say they want to be Liberace or Van Cliburn yeah. or somebody. I remember <laughs> watching uh, Lawrence Welk when I was growing up, you know, and we always remember the last song that he always plays. Yeah. Good night, my friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Let the wish smile. <laughs> no way to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Um, um, like I was saying, the idea came to me to do this new Lawrence Welk show this year, uh, starting in July. I wrote the script for the program. I had to design the set, and MCAT and the uh, Mozilla Cultural Council gave me a grant to do it. And uh, the performers came, and we shot it September 29th, as I you mentioned. Know, does it always and it amaze aired you? October 29th. Does, so. it, does it always amaze you uh, it, that um, how movies could only be an hour and a half when all that work goes into them? It's amazing. Yeah, it took two hours to shoot this entire hour pilot. And um, so after, I, as I was saying, nobody wants to grow up and be Lawrence Welk, but now that I've done this show, my goal in life is to be the next Lawrence Welk. And uh, hopefully <laughs> I've succeeded. The 20th century one. There yes, we go. hopefully I've succeeded with this new show. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll watch this on YouTube. Music with ASAP, a remake update of the Lawrence Welk show. We had some great guests on there. And uh, of course, Mayor John Ingen, you know, he, he was just a good sport. Just a really good sport. <laughs> And um, as I mentioned, I did hear from the Lawrence Welk Network. I assume they're going to be checking out this show. <laughs> there you go. You might have to make a special appearance if they're doing it still. Well, you know, if they give me the opportunity, I'm sure going to take it. Because then I'll be able to build more elaborate sets. Right. And uh, keep it going. And we have the bubbles on the They program. might ask you to dance, though. You might have to do some dancing. Well, if this show evolves, I've mm -hmm. got it planned. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> well, there is a little dancing, sort of, in this pilot. Louise Bundy, she's the hostess of the program, so she's a professional ballet teacher. There you go. And she did a little ballerina thing right on her toes oh, when I was playing uh, Nadia's theme. Oh, wow. I'll do a little bit of that. I was playing this song while Louise was doing her um, ballerina, and it just looked great on film. These notes are quiet. You can barely hear it. See? Yeah. I'm going to stop right there, but... Um, I yeah, like that. That's um, a very beautiful song. I was playing Nadia. I was playing that song, and Luis was doing her tap, uh, tap dancing, ballerina <laughs> dancing, <laughs> and it looked great on film. But getting back to the Lawrence Welk Network, um, if they uh, decide to pick this show up, for example, I'll do it. I also got an email from a reporter on CBS Up to the Minute. Are you familiar oh, with that? Oh yes. Oh yes. With Anne Marie Green. Yes, my dad watches. Well, one it of all the, the reporters time. on that program contacted me too, so we'll oh, see. Oh, see, uh, you're getting some Facebook time. Yeah, I think so, <laughs> or, or something. Uh, and of course, my email is out there too. So. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool. But uh, we'll just see what's going to happen with this new Lawrence Welk show, and um, I'm going to keep this show in the tradition of Lawrence Welk. You know, with the gowns. You'll see it when you watch right, it later right. on. Louise had this beautiful Well, at gown. some point when I can get my documentary going, well, America can look for America shallow and ignorant, or are we? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. That way it helps everybody also get educated in the do's and don'ts about how to make it through the 21st century here. Good. Which I actually believe that it's still the 20th century until I see, because I'm Molly dyslexic, so until I see 2100, to me, everybody, it's the 20th century still. We're just taking it by the day. <laughs> uh huh, great. Well, I hope that show goes well for you. But in the meantime, at least you're a guest on ASAP Cafe, and uh, I'm glad you're here. It's been a while since I've been to a cafe. Yeah, well, this is the closest. <laughs> now. ASAP Cafe, you can say you're in a. Make believe cafe for a while, <laughs> but uh, both of my shows are fun. ASAP Cafe and of course this Lawrence Welk Plenty show. Plenty of good cheer. I, yeah, well I'm giving this more priority because this is the one I want to launch off nationally. And um, I've been getting some emails from Christian organizations too that are aware of this new Lawrence Welk show. And the most common thing that they're asking me to do is keep it as clean as possible. 
Right. And I, I'm not. I don't mean that critically when I say that. I mean there's children you, watching. <laughs> yeah, when you watch also, a lot of the award shows right. or music shows or interviews, they're like half dressed. They're they're popping out of their dress or right. or um. And I'm not saying that's wrong. That's just the style. Or they're swearing at people at their well, concerts. Well, you know, I you know? I, I, I actually <laughs> I actually know of a, a ballroom teacher her name's Pauline Bur Burquin, mm -hmm. and uh, she thinks on on the ballroom. So they have, you know, that's it with the stars, that they need to add more to the gowns. They... <laughs> right. Well, see, that's She's my tradition. point. With this new Lawrence Welk show, um, the Christian organizations that are aware of this were asking me to try to keep it clean. And I'll do everything I can. I want to have a, I want to bring back to life family entertainment where you can have your five-year-old grandchild watching and not have to be concerned. You might have to slip in uh, the, you know, Sesame Street theme once in a while, you know. I don't know. Let's have fun with that for a second. <laughs> Let's have fun with it for a second. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never no loss to the grouch here, though. <laughs> yeah, but no, anyway, um, getting back to this new Lawrence Welk show, um, I want to carry the tradition. The only difference is we're just doing more modern music in this new Lawrence Welk right. show, like that Painted Black that I introduced. And, Which is uh, great. This is yeah, great. Uh, just a classical version. So, um... That's what my goal is. Do you know any Billy Joel? Yes, I do. Um, I haven't done it in a while. Continental, hot, funk, cool, junk, even if it's old junk, it's still rock and roll to me. Yes? It's been a while since I've done that, but uh, <laughs> anyway, like we talked about, um, I like to take the popular songs and make them sound classical. It's yeah, different. Right. But I was taught how to do that. Well, that's, that's okay because, you know, it's really funny. They had a concert, a dual concert in Las Vegas. I thought it was very, really, very really entertaining. Mm -hmm. Side by side, pianos. Mm -hmm. One side was Billy Joel, the other side was Elton John. Oh, I heard about it that. It was a sold out concert. It was magnificent. I can and, imagine. And the place was loaded. I got to see it on, I think it was HBO or Showtime. And those two were competing. It was almost like the scene from Roger Rabbit, you know, where you got Daffy Duck. Yeah, Daffy I remember Dunks that. Coming. I remember that. It was almost like that, but they were being polite to each other and mm -hmm. they, they uh, went as far as they could go to push each other, you know, mm -hmm. to get there. So that's cool. Well, I'm going to stop on that note. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do with this Lawrence Welk show is just uh, bring back family entertainment and uh, just have fun with it. And uh, no telling what current songs I'll think of in the future as I get to do more of these shows. Changing the subject, getting back to uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, wasn't that a cool movie? Oh, I love that. <laughs> you you, know, had, you had fantasy with reality trying to coincide with each other. It's pretty cool. Well, you know what's interesting is when you watch a lot of the movies like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and uh, some of the movies of the past, you ever notice they always play the same song? It's the Hungarian Rhapsody by Franz Liszt. Oh, yes. They, uh, they kind of always use that song. And um, when I was a kid, I watched Bugs Bunny, you know, playing oh, the piano. Oh, yes, yes. Remember when the mouse was stuck in the piano? Yes. And they were playing uh, Hungarian Rhapsody then. And I, as a kid, I thought, that's pretty cool. I never knew that, that that was the title of it, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's called it's... The Hungarian Rhapsody by Franz Liszt. And they always play that song. I mean, they did it in the Woody Woodpecker cartoon. I don't know if anybody would remember old Woody. Mm -hmm. They did it in Bugs Bunny. They did it in uh, Tom and Jerry. That same song. And now, and of course, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So <laughs> They always use that song. I guess that's a great uh, piano song for cartoons. Yeah. But that's a Luckily, great way to expose kids. Luckily, we don't all chatter our chief like Roger, though. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great way to um, expose you your know child. Any of that? Do you know any of that? Not that song, but yeah. uh, let's let's do that. Uh, what was that song that Jessica Rabbit did? It was called uh, "Why Don't You Do Right." I'll give you. Oh, a, why don't you do? Yeah, right I'll give you a little like simplified version of it. Do. Some money too. 
that cool? Oh, yeah. Why don't you but do right? Rem- remember her words. She can't help the way she's drawn. Yeah, I, I wonder that how was she a great kept line. her dress on. <laughs> well, you had to leave that to the animators who That's did that. That's right. <laughs> but um, actually, a lady named Peggy Lee made that song famous. Oh, yes, she was very good. I don't know how many people will remember Peggy Lee, but uh, she there's a clip of her on YouTube with the Benny Goodman Orchestra singing that oh. when she was young. So that had to be maybe 1940, I guess. Yeah. And um, then she had sang that song throughout her career. And speaking of Peggy Lee, I saw her in concert when I was in high school. Oh, did you really? Yeah, oh, I got wow. to see her. And, and the funny thing about it is before that concert started, she walked right up to me. I think I was like 15 at the time. Oh, wow. And she was really elegant. And she walked right up to me. She says, hi, young man, how are you? And I looked at her like, I'm fine, ma'am. You I'm know, better now. <laughs> well, you know, what's the funny thing is I didn't know who she was at the time. Like I know who she is now. Mm-hmm. And she was all by herself, no entourage or anything. And she oh, just wow. had a conversation with me. And she asked me, uh, what grade are you in, young man? I said, well, I'm sophomore in high school. So she talked to me about high school, talked about being a kid. And oh, that's so cool. It was cool. It was just one-on-one. And I got to talk with Peggy Lee for about maybe five or ten minutes. And then she left. Mm-hmm. She, she wished me well, and she left. And then she went on stage, and I was like, oh, that's that lady that I just got to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> my and there friend, she was on stage singing. My friend Jeff told me today, it was kind of funny, he was telling me a story. When he was in, uh, I think it was Arkansas, mm-hmm. at a McDonald's one time, he seen a gentleman walk in that kind of t- made him feel like it was Michael Jackson. Uh-huh. And he just kept watching the guy walking, and he's like, that's got to be. Well, he didn't know until the guy ordered a Big Mac that, yes, it was Michael Jackson. He had a veil over his face that was see-through, and he's mm-hmm. big, huge, dark glasses, right? And when he goes, um, yes, I'd like a, a Big Mac, and I, I get a chocolate <laughs> shake. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, it's Michael. You know, so he's telling his brothers and everything, going, really? He goes, no, 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 don't charge him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go, yeah, I can have an hour and a half, you know. You know. Yeah, I mean, Michael Jackson probably could have bought the whole McDonald's, you know. <laughs> he, he was the only one who showed up in the limo, so I should have gave it away kind of right then, not yeah. that it comes with a limo to the McDonald's, but it was just funny as hell. <laughs> Well, let's have fun with Michael Jackson. Um, I'm going to do my version of Beat It here. Now, right. remember, this isn't really a piano song. This is something I made up here. So right, right. Up but if you can make it sound electric, cool, go for it. Well, I'll try. <laughs> I thought about combining the two together, right? Mm-hmm. So you'd have you'd have his version with with Red Alice going, beat it, eat yeah. it, beat uh-huh. it, eat it. <laughs> but no, Michael Jackson was an extremely gifted person. I think when the Lord decided to bring Michael Jackson into existence, we're gonna give him talent. You yeah, are. You know, did. just open the dictionary with the word talent. There's Michael Jackson's picture. It should be on the Webster dictionary. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like it's like he knew that he wanted a little bit of friendship with Elvis Presley there. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think Michael Jackson is one of the greatest singers that ever lived. Yes, great composer. And I'm not saying that because good. I'm an African American right. person. I mean, the guy left some great music. I mean. And he, he was a great composer. He wrote yeah. a lot of his own music, and he knew how to put lyrics together with music to make you feel. And that's what makes a song really get you going. Either it's going to make you one emotion or another emotion, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, uh, I like a lot of his music, too. That was from the movie. But anyway, um, yeah, um, a lot of people don't remember Michael Jackson, the little boy, when he was with the Jackson 5. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I know I normally don't like to listen to children sing because it's like, you know. 
But Michael Jackson, when he sang as a little boy, he was screaming them high notes and he was the, first soprano. Big yeah, time. hitting the pitch just <laughs> right. And so, uh, in his case, I made an exception. I had I have on my karaoke um, little disc thing that's about this big. It has Rock and Robin on it. So I thought mm. about him, and they play it like him. They don't play it like the original composer and singer. So it's uh -huh. kind of like I'm trying to catch up with that. My friend goes, "This is the Jackson Five version." Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, it, I'm sorry he's gone, but he was a fantastic singer. Oh yeah. And there's not very many people in life that can sing like Michael. He sold Jackson. a lot of jackets. He should have. Or let's say Frank Sinatra for those who mm. remember Frank. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> not not very many people sing like those two. So. No, no, no. They're we're blessed to have had both of they, them. On, on one time though, on American Idol, there was a gentleman on there that I swear to God, if you close your eyes, you thought it was Frank Sinatra. Yeah, there are a few. There are a few that come along on the scene that kind of sound like him. Yeah. Harry Connick was one of them. Harry mm -hmm. Connick Jr. Oh, when yeah. he first emerged on the scene. There was there was even a, a guy um, in Great Falls that there's a karaoke bar called R and R, mm -hmm. and uh, he came in, and I didn't know. I thought they had the radio on. And I thought they were playing Michael Holton. This guy who looked nothing like Michael, nothing at all. He had very short hair. He just got out of the military. But when he he said wrote this, he sang the song Steel Bars. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It's like oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my God! How you sound so much like Mr. Bolton. Oh my God! He's like, well, thank you. I try hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's very good. But um, music is a wonderful thing. Um, it soothes the soul. It well, does. I'm no singer or dancer or anything, obviously, but as far as the piano, I've been doing it since I was a child. And you might find this story this story a little amusing. Um, and I mentioned it in my autobiography, too, um, how the piano came into our family's lives, you might say. My father had a habit of drinking gin when we lived in Virginia. He was stationed at Langley Air Force Base up there in Hampton, Virginia. And uh, he'd be drinking gin, and he'd leave the house and come home and buy something brand new like a toaster or lamp or <laughs> towels or something and when I, and I was in the fourth grade at that time and he came home with a brand new piano one day after drinking a lot of gin. Oh there you go that was the next That's how the whole thing started and my mom had a fit. She was crying. <laughs> what are we going to do with this piano? Well, I'm telling you the kind Make of room. I'm telling you the kind of the simplified version. She went off on him. <laughs> but the piano stayed and uh, I started messing around with it and then two years later I got Formal training, and that's how the whole thing started. Well, that's how Michael he was he started messing around with Joe Jackson, his dad's guitar. Mm -hmm. and he's going, Don't touch my guitar, that, that's our money maker, don't touch that, you know. And he if, finally, when Mike he caught her, heard Michael singing, he's like, Well, okay, now I have to let you have the guitar, <laughs> you're gonna be the breadwinner, okay, go for it, you know. <laughs> but they but luckily, Mike was nice enough to let him stay the manager for a while. Rogers neighborhood. Nobody really remembers that. <laughs> I was catching that one there. I'll do it again in a bit. But that's PBS a true story. PBS loves you. <laughs> yeah, yes, PBS loves you. <laughs> and I'm hoping PBS will pick up my show too, along with the Lawrence Welk Network or whoever, ABC, NBC, any one of those organizations. Why let good talent go to waste is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I was having fun with Mr. Rogers neighborhood. A lot of kids don't even remember him now. But you know, uh, speaking of Fred Rogers, he left a a pure legacy too. Have you ever really paid attention to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Yeah, I remember the puppets. It's a very clean show. All those shows, um, uh, Sherry Lewis and Lamb, John, Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, I used to watch all those shows when I was growing up, but I was really impressed with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And uh, talking about clean legacy, that's why when I do this new Lawrence Welk show, I want to follow in that tradition too. Not just Lawrence Welk, but keep it clean and so on. Oh, you, and can, all those shows you can always have pure. lots of fun. Yeah. With or without soap. <laughs> You know, when it comes to playing the piano, you never know what I'm going to play. 
Oh, I have a you song that you play that's piano. It's out in John's um, Your Song. All right, I'll do that for you. It's been a while since I've been about happy to do that for you. I know the words to that one pretty good. Well, this is my version of El Your Song. I'll do it all the way through. Okay. I just throw a few little classical runs on that, but um, that's a neat song. In fact, I've done that song in weddings, though. That's a, that's a, really that's a, that's a lot cool of song. piano in that one, so I was like, oh, I know that one. Yeah, you know, I think the most common three songs that you hear in weddings, Debussy's Claire de Lune, the one that goes like this. Oh, let me do that again. It's not like me to miss that. Yeah, yeah. I, it's hard to play those kind of classical music on these kind of keyboards, but that's Claire de Lune. And then the other common song is um, Pacal's Canon in D, I don't the one that goes like this. Orchestra comes in later. Yeah. Okay. And then, then, um, I heard and then um, of course, Elton John's "Your Song." Those are the three most common um, okay. songs that, at least in my opinion, that you hear in weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those three, and I've done well, all three of those songs actually in weddings in the past. <laughs> but with the Claire de Lune, I give them a shorter version because that song would take too long to play it. Well, yeah, and then all they the way expect through. the orchestra to come on in at any time. Then. And... So, so I just give them a kind of a shorter version of that song, but. Um, they're, they're very common. There was another one um, that is a Russian tune, I believe. It's uh, Those Were the Days. I don't know that one. Once upon a time there was a tavern um, where we used to sit and drink all day. Then I don't recognize that. Those were the days, my friend. Oh, okay. I, when you said that part. because these keys are not, it's not easy to play that kind of music on these kind of yeah, keyboards. Yeah, a friend of mine told me that there's a big difference. There is, because these keys are so hard to keyboard. push and, and all that. But uh, speaking of Claire DeLune, he just made me think of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Do you remember that television show? Oh, yes. With the comedian Ray Romano? Yeah, I remember. Well, there was this episode they had where um, he wanted to record the football game. 
and he just grabbed his VHS tape and he didn't realize he had grabbed uh, his wedding. Oh. You know, when he and Deborah got married and they were playing Claire de Lune. They had the whole Claire de Lune in this wedding and she's walking up the aisle. Oh, wow. Which is a beautiful song, you know, instead of traditional Here Comes a Bride. So they had Claire de Lune when she's walking up there. And so, for whatever reason, um, Ray puts the tape in. I guess he didn't think anything about it. He just recorded it over the whole wedding. Oh, no. So Deborah decides she wanted to reminisce and watch the wedding. So she puts the tape in and she sees the first part of Claire de Lune, just the, you know, the first notes here. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden you hear this, and now this is the football game. And, <laughs> and the whole wedding was erased. I found that really amusing, but she was ticked. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ray, there's a problem here. We have yeah, an issue. Well, that was such a funny show. And, and what was funny to me was that mother-in-law, the actress Doris Roberts. She, she oh, was yeah. perfect. She was good person. for that, yeah. Yeah, she, she was one of the mother-in-laws that like, ah, get her away from me. <laughs> But um, that was such an amusing show to me. <laughs> but yeah, um, Ray Romano's character erased Deborah's uh, wedding with Claire de Lune on it, so that was kind of. Oops, you shouldn't. Oops, of funny there it there. is. <laughs> yeah. But um, actually, Claire de Lune's a very beautiful composition. And if this were a real piano, then I'd play it. Play Just it. like Moonlight Sonata. Yeah, it, I'll do a little bit of the Moonlight Sonata, and you can tell the difference here. See, it's just not the same. But see, um, it's not fun playing classical music on these uh, electronic keyboards. Synth synthetic songs. Synthetic, yeah. <laughs> I, I, these instruments. And well, I, drums are even different. You know, you ever notice that when, if you hear the electronic drums yeah. versus the regular, there's all big difference. Yeah, so I don't think they'll ever hire me to do a commercial for Even the computerized electric guitars this. are just totally different. Yeah, and I don't like playing classical music on these electronic instruments because they don't sound that well. And it's monotone. You can't. You know, when you play classical music, you're supposed to be able to express yourself like this. Right, right. And it's just so monotone, just turn it up and down, and it just has no feeling yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's why... I well, that's why I, I always tell people, you know, no matter how much you count on the, the machines, mm -hmm. remember, it still has to be worked by a human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so unless so, that's happened, then they have it. So. <laughs> but, you know, um, this is the only piano available as far as here. If I were Liberace and a million dollars, I'd put a little baby grand in here <laughs> every time when I uh, do the ASAF Cafe for real. He had so many jewels all over his pianos, it was crazy. You know, um, I mentioned this in one of my early uh, interviews about Liberace. People had trouble with him, not because he couldn't play. They just couldn't get past the, the image, the, the rhinestones and the jackets, to pay attention to what he was doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were missing out. He came out like a king. Yeah, they were missing out by uh, not getting past that. And that, all it is is just show business. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. born. And, well, I was born, but... You would think you would have had problems, though, playing piano with them big rocks on his fingers, you know? Well, yeah, unless they're just just props, like empty rings, not you know, with no weight on it. Right. I don't know. Right. He had some strong fingers, I was thinking, all his time. And I know some people are going to disagree with me, and I've said this a lot. I think Liberace was the best pianist that ever lived. Now, I'm not talking about older Liberace with the rings. I'm talking about, you can go on uh, YouTube and see him when he was a young man on the old uh, mm -hmm. Liberace show, the 1952 Liberace right. show, when he was young. And he played Flight of the Bumblebee and Claire de Lune and, and The Minute Waltz from Chopin and all those other compositions without missing a beat. But mm -hmm. see, people aren't going to remember that part of his life when he was young. Right. They're going to remember the older when he was getting all flamboyant and crazy and having fun. He was right. just having fun. Right. You know, he had already made his millions. I don't think he had to play serious anymore. He's just having fun with it. 
But as a young man, I think he was a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Just the best. But that's yeah. just my personal opinion. I, I mean, I've studied. Well, at least you didn't have to. You didn't have to walk in anybody's footsteps. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to imitate Liberace anyway, except for the candelabra. He didn't invent that idea. They've had candles on the piano since the days of Mozart, and Beethoven. Right. Right. Probably well, you get to see a lot of portraits. System. There's a lot of portraits like of that too. It's just by the time Liberace did it, it just took off as far as a gimmick or Hollywood or yeah. whatever you want to call it. And now he's been gone for a number of years, and it's my time and my turn, and I'm doing it. And it works, at least for me, having a, the candelabra on the piano, for me, it works. I remember one time uh, when I was in Billings years ago, I used to perform there, and uh, this little girl, she must have been about nine or ten, she walked right up to me one day, she goes, you know, you are so cool with those candles. I'm like, thank you. And there was another incident. I uh, was on my way to the Billings Hotel. I had to do a performance uh, mm -hmm. that evening. And I didn't get a ride there, so I had to do the old-fashioned way to take the bus, Aww. right? So I'm sitting here with this nice seat <laughs> on with these candles, right? And this police officer saw it, and he made a beeline around, and he pulled right up with a smile on his face. He goes, excuse me, I see you all the time. Why do you have those candles? I said, well, sir, um, I'm a pianist, and I'm on my way to the Billings Hotel to play. And he just had this laugh on his face. <laughs> and my first thought, I thought he was going to go, Err! Pull me over, like, all right, hands up against the wall. <laughs> but no, he, this police officer had a smile on his face, and uh, <laughs> he was just curious why I was carrying candles. <laughs> but it works for me, so I'm carrying on the tradition. Not only the Lawrence Welk tradition, but the Liberace um, tradition. I don't think I'll be wearing rhinestones and stuff like that. No, probably not. <laughs> not but, anytime real soon, right? <laughs> no, I don't think I'll do that. But I do like the uh, candelabra. And uh, you still have to get better candles. These are all broken, taped on. <laughs> <laughs> Props are beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a prop. But speaking of the candelabra, I'm going to start playing at the mall December 1st this year. Oh, there you yeah, go. I got the uh, invitation from the Southgate Mall to start playing the piano December 1st. Oh, cool. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the area, December 1st, 2nd and 3rd, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the month of December, I'll be playing the piano at Cafe Dolce at the Southgate Mall. And again, tune in to my brand new television show, Music with ASAF, a remake update of the Lawrence Welk Show, which is posted on the uh, YouTube computer. So, if, if this show of mine gets picked up, we will see. <laughs> and he will make sure that he has his fish <laughs> <laughs> That's a famous song from the 60s. You know, you, you were mentioning that the Lawrence Welk, you know, commission got a holding and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking, well, that'd be really cool because I I, I actually got on the internet mm -hmm. and to sign up for The Voice. Oh, but okay. I know I have to travel and all that. But I was thinking it wouldn't be hard. I mean, all you're actually doing is competing <clears> against <throat> the backs of chairs until they flip around. And I was thinking my goal is basically if I can get them to press it hard enough, because mm -hmm. I'm great with Journey. I know a lot of Journey songs. Yeah. And they turn it around, either the chair will keep spinning like that or it'll spin out. So it's the voice you're trying out for? Yeah, I'm thinking about going on that. Okay, um, if you can't go there in person, do they have a thing on the computer where you can just uh, send your audition? I don't know. Well, I know on America's Got Talent, uh, if you can't uh, be there in person, you can send them a video. And uh, K-Pax did an interview with me a few years back and where I was playing the piano at the Patty Creek Market and I used that as an audition I remember tape. seeing you there. Yeah, and it got accepted. I got an email from America Got Talent. They liked what they saw with that K-Pax News interview. And so what I did, since I probably won't be able to go there in person, I sent them the entire Lawrence Welk show. Oh, I don't like that. So we'll see what happens. but. Great Christmas present. I might decline anyway on that show, not because it's, it's not a, not because it's not a good show. It's just I don't, like we talked about. I don't know what I'd have to offer because I can't really sing. I just play right. the piano and. Uh, well, they they sometimes take musicians. It just depends. There was two brothers that um, they decided to do a ZZ Top <laughs> song on their cellos. It sounded really cool. I mean, I've never seen classical ZZ Top in my life, but that was cool. And the father, he had a Russian accent. He was. That's my voice. I'm so proud of him. So proud of him. Listen how to play and all oh, those are good. <laughs>
Mm, okay. I'll keep it in mind. That, um, I have till about the end of 2015 to make a decision if I really want to go on America's Got Talent. Yeah, you have to um, cover your lodging and everything. I know. And yeah. see, I'm, I'm not rich enough to really do that. Yeah. But And my focus is this... Uh, um, Lawrence Welk show anyway because if it goes national I won't need to go on America's Got Talent I'll already be doing a national scene anyway focusing right. on my show but I, I did submit that and I sent America's Got Talent a copy of the entire Lawrence Welk show so that's good we'll see what happens just play it by year <laughs> yeah I have a whole year so by the end of 2015 I'll decide but as for the voice I hope you I hope that works out for you Oh yeah, and it's worth trying. It'd be cool. I think I could fit. I could make it through maybe the first round, and then we'll just go from there. <laughs> well, you never know. You might end up getting the, what is it? Semifinals or? Oh, that. And wouldn't it be, be cool awesome. to have someone like Blake Shelton uh, be your coach? I probably would go with um, either Christine Aguilera or Adam Levine. Well, me personally, if I well, I'm not a singer, but if I were, I'd go with Blake Shelton. Not the, not not that the others aren't good. This is something about Mr. Shelton. He just seems like he he's really person, knows what he's doing. I would I would choose the others because they're more into the um, hip hop and they're more into rock and roll and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did have a man on there that was from Ireland, and he he had a he had children, a couple of children, I think, and a wife, and he actually made it to the finals, and he was doing a lot of seventies rock. Really. And he was very good. That's a neat song from the past. They played that on Thanksgiving too. Well, again, I hope that works out for you doing your um, um, the voice. When do you uh, when do you think you might try out for it? I'm not sure yet. I have to still work on the final expenses, we'll say. Well, yeah, <laughs> I wish I was rich enough like Liberace to send you there. Yeah. But even if I luck up and get on um, well, that's America's Nash. Got Talent a year from now. I still don't know what I would be able to give them, but we'll just see. They just want outstanding performance. That's what they want. Well, I would probably do my painted black or something, you know. Yeah, that know. would that would get the crowd going. Oh boy, crowd I don't going. know. We'll see. I got a whole year go on, They go on crowd participation, so. Yeah. The most applause is the biggest you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they've had a lot of talent shows uh, for years. They have some talent out right now. I was watching a girl on YouTube. She was only 15, I mm -hmm. think it is. Mm -hmm. She has magic fingers to play the guitar. Really? And she plays um, songs from Pink Floyd and, it, and Van Halen that just you swear that it's a solo that's already being performed on the radio. Yeah, well, you know, there are a lot of talented people in the world. I mean, they've had young singers coming out for years, like Charlotte Church. Do you remember her? Mm. The young lady that could sing like the angel, the, had like the operatic. I think I do. I've, I've seen a few of them. And uh, then, of course, Susan Boyle. She is on the scene. She's now. from the American Idol that was across the ocean, though. Yeah, but it was amazing. When I first saw her, I was like, holy cow. Where did they find yeah. her? But a lot of people are still <laughs> going on the singing nuns, you know. Like, That's what I'm talking about, now? yeah. And uh, let's see, there's um, there's just a lot of young up, young people. That are I thought it was that. funny about the singing nun thing because yeah, I saw that. Nuns, I yeah. think it was the 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. There were two nuns that were singing uh, a foreign song, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well the nuns are back. <laughs> well, I saw that video with the the singing nuns, and uh, very impressive. Maybe they'll make a zillion dollars and help the poor or something. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but my point is, whether you're a nun or whatever you are in life, there are a lot of talented folks out there. Mm. And that's why and that's I a good that, thing. That's a good I know. Thing. That's why I want to launch this show and, and hope I get that chance to do that. I hope NBC well, you might end up or, with your own cafe. Who knows? Uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of a fictitious one, huh? You might, you might end up with, I mean, you get enough popularity, they might just pick you out a corner and say, here you go in Missoula, have your own corner, <laughs> you know, because I, I feel that it was really cool that I don't know whose idea it was, but to put the piano downtown now, so anybody can just go up and get rid of stress and play, that's just awesome. Well, I had fun with that this summer when they did put the pianos out. The only thing, the only problem I had, and I've, I've made no secret about it, was the location. I didn't agree with the location, but the concept was was good oh, yeah. and uh, I think they're going to be doing it uh, again uh, 
next summer whenever they start it up again is oh, just cool. this way cool. So. Oh, cool. And it worked for me. Um, there are some videos of me on YouTube uh, ASAP at the Plaza. <laughs> so maybe people will tune in and see that too. Yeah. Did you ever see the original movie to that? Which the one? Mash. Oh, Mash. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Elliot Gould was on there. And yeah. They, and they had a lot of different people, and then they had some people that just took over the parts. You know. Yeah, that's the movie. But they had that, T. Alan Alda. He that's, liked the star. He yeah, liked that's him. the movie that launched off the series. Right. And of course, Alan Alda was the perfect person to play Hawkeye Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, the, the he's the reason why I watched it, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I mean, Last Days of Mash is actually here, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I believe some things are just kind of like repetitive in pattern, yeah. But he had a. His, his sense of humor wasn't really dry. You know, that's the cool thought. There's a lot of dry humor out in the comedy world now, you know. So people have forgotten that, you know, they're making computer jokes and things like that. And back in a different era that we know quite well, we were singing about, we were singing and making jokes about who's going to have fun making love and who's going to go to that fabulous party. And, hmm. <laughs> you know, and the fashion, the fashion design, you know, and all that good stuff. <laughs> It's amazing how old those shows are, you know. That was a lot of, there was a lot of realism in it, too. I know it. My mom had a problem with that show. She didn't like that show. Oh. But you gotta remember, she was married to a military man. Oh, that's probably why. Yeah. I mean, MASH was a fine television show, and the actors, uh, Henry Morgan and all the rest of them, Alan, all, they were all fine, but uh, my mom just wasn't into that show. And I can understand her point of view, you know, because she lived it. She had a husband that had to travel all the time. And, yeah. You know, we had to travel. So that made you an army kid. brat. <laughs> well, Air Force brat, yeah, same thing. <laughs> the A's so, in there, the A's yeah. in there. <laughs> so um, we're uh, just about winding down here. we got about five more minutes left, but um, do you know any, Do you know any uh, Celine Dion songs real quick? Not really. I no. don't think those okay. are like what you call right. piano songs. How about um, uh, ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, you know anything in there? Probably not, you'd have to have a, an okay. orchestra. Uh, let me see if I can think of something modern that you wouldn't hear on the piano every day. Um, let's see. Um, Neil Diamond. Oh, there you go. This this should be checked because you know how silent those notes appear. Yeah. Something's not right. Now, I don't know what it is, but he'll figure it out. <laughs> but um, yeah, there are a lot of songs that you don't hear on the piano every day that are a lot of fun to play and stuff. He usually it comes from when they, when the first person that's creating the song, they either use a guitar mm -hmm. or they use a piano. It's mm -hmm. like the mandatory tools to, to get a song written. I'm gonna play something out of the clear blue. See if you know this one. Okay.
expecting Holly Berry any time now. <laughs> hey, Bond girl. <laughs> well, you know, if I uh, had the look, maybe I could be a James Bond, huh? Yeah. There you go. Not, not. You go. I don't think so. <laughs> <coughs> well, if you were doing comedy, it would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, once I uh, had a friend of mine put me up on a dare once, and uh, I went to one of those, like, where you take off your t-shirt, show off your muscles. Everybody's all buffed and all. And I'm walking there looking like Kermit <laughs> with the frog, right? And I'm just standing there. You know, I got I got clapped just for guts. Oh, so that's a true story. I didn't win obviously because I only weigh 120 pounds. I got a 28 waist, and uh -huh. I'm sitting up there with people like really bulked <laughs> up. History universe is tight. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> and it was the funniest thing. Uh, when I did that, I think I was in my 20s, late 20s at the time, so. Well, the one thing you have to remember though, <coughs> they have a hard time finding a shirt and you don't. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm never gonna be a Mr. Universe or anything like that, but uh, I just did it on a dare. And there you go. It, but it just keep fun. in mind, you might be shelterless, but you're never homeless, because until <laughs> you get that perfect rocket ship, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's the only time I ever entered one of those shows like that. I don't know what got into me to do that, but I did. I mean, I was like a literal bean pole in comparison <laughs> to these people like that. You were just showing them, I can show you a pa. But that's, that's my applause from all the pretty ladies at the time was just for Well, that for was nerve, your goal then. Yeah. Now we know the goal. Well, no, actually a friend of mine put me up to it. And uh, you know, uh, when you're like in your 20s, you don't right. think like you do when you're like 50 something. <laughs> Because at, at 56, there's no way on this earth I would do something like that now. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, at least you did right by not saying the certain word called never. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a... Never and perfect are two outlawed words in my vocabulary. Yeah, I well, I, 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 I think it's a safe assumption. If I say I'm never going to do that again, I probably won't. <laughs> but I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a 56-year-old with no T-shirt. You know? I don't know. There was, there, was, there was the guy with the juicer. <laughs> well, yeah. What, Jack Lane? Well, he was, yeah. Never mind. I guess you got to Mr. Lane had his juicer going on. <laughs> you know, speaking of Jack Lane, I used to watch him when I was in the first grade. He had an exercise program. I don't know if people remember. It was an old black and white exercise program. It's probably on uh, YouTube, like everything else. And uh, he could literally do push-ups with one hand oh, wow. at that time. Oh. It was just the most amazing thing to watch this man literally with his fingers something like this uh, on the floor do a push-up up and down with one hand. Oh, I think I'll switch hands. <laughs> I'm bored with this hand. Let's try this hand. You know? I tried the white side. It might go better. <laughs> yeah, he was just an amazing uh, personality, Jack Lane, and he... You know what I appreciated about him was he did everything the old-fashioned way. Just eat right. <clears throat> yeah, he's very healthy. Very, yeah, very healthy. and uh, not use all that stuff that they do these days. That's why I like the Irish cooking. Because mm -hmm. it does the same thing. We like to use our vegetables and don't forget the potatoes. We have to have the potatoes. It's like a Well, this was on the world news, too. Um, when he was 70 years old, uh, he got in the water. And I think he had like this rope on his teeth. He was pulling like these boats. Oh, God. You know, you're swimming across the water. Here's a toe for you. <laughs> so, yeah, the old Jack Lane, he was an amazing personality. I was really surprised how many people bought, bought his little milkshake machine. Yeah, I mean, if you want to eat, I, yeah, um, I guess you want to eat, right? That's the way to go. Because yeah. I'm thinking of doing that, too, juicing, too, in a few Yeah, the, I'm the, getting well, the, older. More you, the more you drink, the less your stomach has to work. So that you actually, you know, you gain protein versus calories. So. Mm-hmm. And on that note, everything from Jack O'Lane to Superman, it's time to wind down our show. <laughs> and once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is ASAP Cafe, and I am ASAP Adonai, your host. And uh, here's our cafe. My guest is Patty Reed, and uh, we hope she makes it on The Voice one day. Once you get a hold of me, you have him, and then you have, <laughs> <laughs> you have MCAP. I'm up for talent also. So. And before I play my final song and say goodbye, um, once again, I hope you'll tune in to Music with ASAP, a remake update of the Lawrence Welk Show. It's on the computer, on YouTube, and I'm hoping that the major networks will pick it up so we can do more Lawrence Welk shows. <laughs>
And on that note, I'm going to play half of a verse and say goodbye. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, Maranatha. Riva Dirchi. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done. Well, I've, I've done two shows today, so thank you. Uh -huh. Let's see if we can get you a copy of that. Oh, that would be awesome. I think the second show would be probably, well, you can have both. That's fine. Well, thanks to you, we did two shows today, so... Now you're back on schedule. Yeah, I'm pretty much caught up. I still have about 25 more minutes. <laughs> so we do a comedy skit now? <laughs> I don't know. We'll be Abbott and Costello. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who would be Costello, huh? <laughs> That's cool. I always hoped I was photogenic. Yeah, I think you are. I used to look a lot like when I was a teenager, Erin Moran, who played Joni yeah. Cunningham. Yeah, like, I used to look a lot like her when I was about, I would say, between the ages of 11 to 14. Actually, the actress Erin Moran goes way back. She, when she was a little tiny baby girl, she used to, she used to be on a show called Doctari. I don't even know if you'd remember that. Mm -mm. It was a show about uh, animals and the oh. people that took care of animals out in the jungle, out in the oh, really? zoo. Yeah, it was called oh, Dakari, um, was the name of it. And Erin um, Moran had to be about maybe three or four years old, I would guess. Well, she was in the, well, she was not in the same era as uh, Drew Barrymore. I don't think so. Because Drew Barrymore, she did the Suntan commercials. She was a little Suntan, copper tone girl. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, she had the pigtails on, a little tiny bikini. In fact, that's when they when they started making the the copper tone little girl, on the on the drawing, the painting, you know, for the advertisement. They picked that because first they drew the little girl. They okay. just told the artist to draw who, the little girl, right? And then from there they said, we'll find an actress, and she was up for the grabs. I think someone's here who can shut the camera down. Maybe you turn it off this way here. I'll, I'll try it here and see. Why is it there that is up? Yeah, there. I'm not sure. It, it might suck for me. Just got to keep it. I need to turn it off and find out. Yeah. Can you put a fade on that? Uh, let me get to that. Every time you hear that beep. 